Hello, everybody, and welcome to Keeping It Young podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Beth Lee. And we are the Youngs. Welcome to our episode today. Hey, everybody. We're so happy you're here, and we have enjoyed these last couple of weeks talking to you about turning 30 years of marriage, uh, 30 years into a great marriage. Yes. And hope you enjoyed that episode. I got several texts and messages from people who listened to that. That was yes. encouraging. I actually talked to a girl last night at church who said, hey, I've been listening to the turning 30 years into a great marriage or whatever the top or yeah, the title sure. is. But it was good. It was good to hear encouragement like that. Yes, it was. And we are just uh, right in the middle of beginning our fall schedule, really. Right. And so if you haven't checked out our website to kind of know where we are, we just would love to see you. So I know we're headed into, let's see, we're headed into Ohio and West Virginia Mm -hmm. and actually West Virginia, then Ohio, then back to West Virginia. We got meetings in Tennessee, Mm -hmm. in Virginia, in Nebraska, and back to West Virginia. And so a lot of crazy. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, it's Thanksgiving. Yes. (laughs) And it's amazing when we look at our schedule and the way we do, it's amazing. It seems like Thanksgiving is just right there. And yet there's so much between, you know, everything. Right. At any rate, we are glad you joined us, and we hope that you're having a great week and looking forward to what's left in the week ahead. We have a a new episode or two here, just kind of standalone episodes, and one that has come up several times recently, probably because many of our friends have taken children to college in recent days. Yes, it's been recently that we've all dropped babies off at college, or at least they seem like babies. (laughs) Sure, and several of our friends, you know, are having kids getting married and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. So we want to uh, talk with you guys today about how to successfully navigate the empty nest. Right, and we are not speaking from experience here. Not yet. (laughs) Not yet. Not yet. We have three kids, as many of you know, we have three kids that are married. And then we have a young man in college, Mm -hmm. our youngest son, and then our daughter is still at home and in homeschool. Yes. So she's in the 10th grade. So we still have three more years before we are officially empty nesters. Yes. Yet it's something that comes up frequently in our conversations and our campaigns and our conferences. Mm. And uh, we just thought it would be worth talking through some practical advice and wisdom about handling this empty nest mm-hmm. idea. Right. And and it's interesting because we find several different viewpoints on it. There are some people who are just beside themselves with sorrow. Like they're just barely, you know, right. barely surviving. It's as if their whole life, their whole identity is coming to an end and they don't know what to do after the identity of we have children in our home and we run everywhere with them and they do everything with us and I have given my life for this child and now the child is kind of on their own. And that's a, that's a, just a huge challenge. Yes. And so some folks just fall apart. We, we have witnessed that several times. We, we have also witnessed, you know, the idea of divorce can sometimes go up during that time. And it's a strange thing that that happens and it, it is indicative of the fact that oftentimes our children do become, as Bethley just said, our identity. Right. And they also become the focus of our life. And that mm-hmm. can be financially, that right. can be as far as the busyness of the schedule. Yes. And and so many areas there. But in the process of that, it, it does appear that it the empty nest is a time when all of a sudden we we realize that we're not as close. Right. The kids were the focus and the marriage was not. Yes. And the things that held a couple together, the children, the schedule, the finances, the responsibility, when all that is removed, there's no other reason to stay together. Yes. And sometimes that now that they're focused on each other, they, they're not close enough to work through all the new challenges of that. Mm. So this is just a, it's an important time. And for you that are not empty nesters, uh, if you have children someday, you will be. So right. stay tuned and stay with us. <laughs> and uh, this is also, uh, this would be great. We would love to hear your ideas and what you did. Mm, so mm-hmm. if, if you never send us a message or we've never heard from you, but there's been an area of your life where you really felt like, you know, we did this and it worked, we would love to hear about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, take just a moment, send us a quick note. You can go to the keepingityoungpodcast.com site right. and voice message us a note from there. Yes. You'll see a microphone in the bo- uh, bo- the lower right-hand corner of the homepage. Mm-hmm. Or send us an email or reach out to us on social media. Either one is fine. But we'd love to hear how you've navigated it. We would also, if you have any questions that, you know, specific to your situation, we'd love to answer those as well. Right. And So reach out. I know as you're introducing this, you had just pointed out two negative ways that can be an outcome of all of a sudden becoming empty nesters. But we want to give you encouragement that we have seen couples navigate this time. We've seen single parents navigate this time. And they do it successfully, absolutely. that it's not that your heart isn't, you know, 
pinched with some sadness that that final baby has finally fl- uh, flown from the nest. There will be that sadness, as with every child that decides that it's time. Well, they just grow into that time. They mature into that time. And so there is that sadness, but it can be also a time of maybe rejoicing a little bit. Hey, it's back to just us too. Or, hey, I have this new adventure ahead of me that I I can navigate. The Lord can help us. And so that's what we're going to talk about, okay, successfully let's just navigating jump right in, it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we want to give you four words that we think would help you to navigate these empty nesting years. Yes. Uh-huh. And uh, here are the four words, and then we'll go back and talk about them. The mm-hmm. word is preparation, right. celebration, yes. communication, innovation. There are some words there that I have heard before on this podcast. That's correct. <laughs> we Absolutely. just revisit them, but they're such an important part of each area of our life. You know, the empty nest is a normal part of life. Yes. And so let's talk about that. It, 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 it closes one chapter, opens another one, or mm-hmm. maybe even finishes the first book in a series and, and begins the second book in a series. Or, so, yes, yes. So it, it, is uh-huh. a, it is a normal part. It, we should expect our children to grow up and eventually leave and be on their own. Yes. That's our plan. Mm-hmm. And there will likely come a time when your kids who leave will have their own family mm-hmm. and begin their own traditions. Right. And that just makes a huge change. It and does. so there's a lot that goes into this empty nester and it's not a one time and done. It is a process of time for a number of years. Yes. So let's start with the word preparation. Obviously mm. what we mean by that is in order to successfully navigate the empty nest, you have to prepare in advance. Right. Right. And so here's a couple of things. We, we, we put thought to two ideas. Number one, you can prepare with a strong marriage. Yes. I, I, I suppose that may be one of the, the strongest things we can say. Absolutely. The stronger the marriage, the easier the empty nest. Absolutely. And the stronger your marriage, uh, you know, is, then the happier will be the empty nest. Yes. So we have to, in advance, remember, even if you have little children right now, the stronger your marriage is when your children are, are smaller, mm-hmm. it's going to help you for the years from now when they do leave. Right. And it's not to say that if, you know, you're going through an empty nest and all of a sudden realizing your marriage isn't what it ought to be, Mm -hmm. then obviously then you've got to prepare, meaning you've got to start right here and prepare to make some changes. Yes. Some improvements, some Mm -hmm. corrections. Yes. And so we focus on each other now so that we can enjoy the empty nest. Right. And this can start, of course, when they're little. And we've talked about that before. But I would say even... Sometimes during those teen years when things just get busy and you are running from daylight to dark, getting kids hither, thither, and yon if they played sports and and you're running to games and running to libraries and all the different things that happen during those teen years, be careful that you don't get so busy that you do grow apart. Make sure that you are focused on or at least paying attention to, hey, how long has it been since we've actually sat down and had a conversation? How long has it been since we've been on a date. And I know mamas in your heart, sometimes you're thinking, well, there will be time for that. My child is a sophomore in high school or a junior or, oh my goodness, they're a senior. I only have this amount of time with them. And then when they go off to college, then yes, we will spend time together. But if you're not concentrating on the marriage during the sophomore, junior and senior year, it will be very difficult to be happy about focusing on your marriage once your child has left the nest. it just goes back to identity. If, yes. if our identity is, oh my goodness, I have a senior in high school and I'm just falling apart. I'm just barely surviving because these are the last days with my senior in high school. Right. Well, something is wrong with our view of life. Yeah, mm. we're emotional about that. It is a it is a huge event. But the it fact is. of the matter is, it's a normal, wonderful, amazing event. Yes. So we got to focus on a, a strong marriage we, or prepare with a with a strong marriage, but we yes. also got to prepare with right thinking. <laughs> yes. And the Bible talks about this a ton. As we think in our heart, that's who we are. Mm. Solomon said that in Proverbs. Yes. And, and Paul reminds us in the New Testament that of things that are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and of a good report, we're to think on those things. Yes. And so this is not a time to be negative. This is not a time to be down. It's not a time to be, you know, like an, oh my goodness, I'm just not going to make it. Mm-hmm. I think I learned this from your daddy. Mm. Uh, well, looking back at it, when we got married, right? And so many dads, and and it's a joke in some ways, and yet it's also true. A, a lot of dads fall apart with the idea of their daughter getting married. Oh mm. my goodness, you know, and the you know the expectation is I'm just going to barely survive the wedding, and 
I'm going to be cleaning my guns when the guy comes over to ask. There's there's a lot of thinking that goes into that. Right. And sometimes it is just nothing more than a little humor. Right. But it is also true that a lot of dads at the wedding barely survive because, oh my goodness, my little girl is just getting married. And, mm-hmm. and, and there's such an emotion about that. I just loved the, the fact that your dad prepared himself for your wedding with a totally different mindset. Mm-hmm. He wanted you to be married. He right. had prayed about you being married. He was happy when you and I fell in love. And then he went to work on the relationship with me, became yes. a very close friend mm-hmm. and arguably one of my best mm. and later became my pastor. But I mean, dad and I talked long hours. He called right. me more than he called you. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> and, That's true. <laughs> and But the idea behind that was that it was right thinking. Mm-hmm. And so you have to prepare for this empty nest by, by, by thinking, right, this is a good thing. Right. This is a good thing. And this is an opportunity. It's a new chapter. And if mm-hmm. you're married, what an opportunity. If you're single, mm-hmm. uh, some, you know, some of you are listening and you're like, well, you know, you're going to talk about working on your marriage. Well, I don't have one. Yes, but, but you will have time to develop friendships, to work right. on friendships, to mm-hmm. work on maybe hobbies. To, right. So you have to prepare. That's our first word. Absolutely. I was thinking while you were speaking that if we are bringing our children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, that is all preparation for them to fly from the nest, for them to go out on their own and to find the will of God for their life and then to do it. And we have seen that in our three oldest who are already out on their own, all of them serving the Lord in different ministries, in different capacities, and what a joy that is. Yes, would I love for them to all live closer, for me to see them all the time? Yes, I would. I would. But at the same time, The Bible is right when it says, I have no greater joy than to see that my children are walking in truth. And I think there are some parents who are so focused on the grief of not having them right there all the time that they are not finding the joy of this is what we, the Lord has helped us do in preparing this child to walk with him on their own. That's correct. And which, which leads us already to the second point, the yes. word celebration. Absolutely. And we've already been all over that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we start with preparation and then we jump to celebration because this is a time of life to celebrate. Mm-hmm. It's okay to, you know, have tears when you drop them at college. It's okay to, yes. it's okay to come home and, you know, and be like, wow, the house is quiet. All of that's normal. Yes. But the way we handle it is not just to prepare, but to celebrate, celebrate the kids being on their own. Bethley's mm-hmm. right. Yes. We should have great joy that our children are growing up and walking in truth on their own. Mm-hmm. We should celebrate that. And we should celebrate as our kids are getting older and having traditions of their own. Right. Uh, You know, we we all go through that. That's a normal part of life. It is. And And so celebrate it. There's much to celebrate. So, you know, if you're just focused on, I, I remember when Abigail went to college, who is our oldest, there were several months there that I just, I, my heart was so heavy. I missed her so, so much. And the Lord just had to... (laughs) really kind of slapped me upside the head. When she came home for a Christmas break, she was so happy and she had advanced so much, uh, not only academically and um, maturity wise, but also in the Lord. And the Lord was like, look at her. She is flourishing. That's where you need to be too. You need to be flourishing. So we can celebrate that when your child calls home and they're like, hey, I'm doing great in this class. Celebrate it. Hey, I was chosen to do such and so, whether it's a sports team or a music team or what." ever celebrate that instead of being like oh well that's nice i'm glad but i'd rather you be here <laughs> you know right. so so it's it's so true though we celebrate their experiences and we celebrate our own yes if you're married and you're an empty nester then the fact of the matter is you who have great opportunity right now remember when you first got married mm-hmm. and it was just the two of you and you did everything together and yes. it was so much fun mm-hmm. you get to go back to that again yes and you celebrate when your kids are coming home you make that a huge event so right. the times you do get to see them you celebrate when they call you and, and especially if your children are doing well spiritually celebrate that yes. and, and and marvel at that. And we have seen that in each of our children. We chose to, we chose to uh, send our children to Christian colleges mm-hmm. and we wanted our children to get a decent education, a good education, but we also wanted our children to grow spiritually during their college years. Yes. 
and we had talked with them, you know, that wasn't just out of the blue. Mm -hmm. You know, we gave them a, you know, kind of a general idea. These are the colleges we're okay with. We never said you have to go to our alma mater or you have to go to this one. There were some, we said, you know, we, if you go to this one, that's between you and God because you're an adult, but we can't support you. We, we mm-hmm. won't help you. Right. But if you go to one of these colleges, we're for you. We'll help you. We'll support you. There's, there's a lot of, you know, different directions we could go right there. Yes. But the point is, if your kids are growing, celebrate it. And mm-hmm. if you're single, uh, celebrate this new time of life. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to revel in the fact that your child is an adult and doing well. Right. And celebrate the fact that you do have a new opportunity. There, mm-hmm. there, we can always, always, always celebrate. Right. And as your kids start to grow up, you that are empty nesters and you're, you know, we've always had our traditions of Christmas. We've always had our traditions of Easter or whatever. Mm-hmm. As your children have kids that start to grow up, you're going to find that there's going to be times where it's going to be harder for your kids to get together with you. Right. Be careful about that parents not to insist. Oh no, we always do it this way. Let them be their own family. Right. And and two, there's another side to the family now. So, you know, your son's wife has a family or your, your daughter's husband has a family. So we have to celebrate and, and you look for new ways to celebrate when the time comes that your kids are doing their own traditions. You, you know, t- take a Christmas cruise or, <laughs> or, you know, uh, take a Christmas trip, go to Iceland and, and see the Northern Lights for Christmas mm. and see God's Christmas decorations. There we or, go. Or, you know, but, but I don't know how far you would go with that. I think we fact, should put that on our bucket list if there's a time when we're finally empty nesters and no one's coming home for maybe, Christmas. Maybe I spoke too soon right here, y'all. <laughs> But uh, so we start with preparation and then Mm -hmm. celebration and uh, we're going to give these last two points. But before we do, let's pause a moment and just remind you that are listening of, of, the church crew. Yes. If you have not yet visited the church crew.com, please do so. Yes. And uh, we've partnered with them. They've helped support our ministry and we just really are very impressed with what they're doing. Right. And, and if you're a small church, don't be afraid to log in because it works in a small church. If you're mm-hmm. medium size or large, this will really help you to organize your, you know, your, your, your volunteers. volunteers. Yes. The church crew.com. And of course we've mentioned my pillow.com before and I hope you'll visit them and use our promo code Y-O-U-N-G. Yes. And I just got my new slides from my pillow and yes. I got white ones for the house. And mm-hmm. my family has made so much fun on my white slides. Well, I, and we know why you chose them because they stand out. They're very bright white. <laughs> and that way everyone knows, do not wear dad's slides fact, we've, outside. We've had guests in our house who've been like, whoa. <laughs> and, uh, so maybe I need but to revisit mypillow.com he, and get more. But you love them. Because they're, you said they're very comfortable. Right. And so, so there check out you those go. two if you haven't yet done so. Now, here's number three okay. How do you successfully navigate this emptiness? Preparation, mm-hmm. celebration. Number three, communication. Communication. How many times have we said that word? I don't even know. I think it's every podcast. We might. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But this is a huge and very important part of, of navigating this emptiness. We communicate, first of all, uh, plans, we communicate needs, we communicate desires. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and your spouse uh, need to talk a lot during the empty nest years. It's yes. a time to communicate what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, communication draws us closer to each other. Yes. And we can revel also on the fact that if your child goes to college 2,000 miles away, as ours have, <laughs> 1,800 or however many miles, uh, the the wonderful thing about living this generation is communication is easier than it's that it's ever been. Yes, and of course we all know that texting is not the same as touching and talking and looking into each other's eyes. We mm-hmm. even FaceTime has its limitations. Yes, but we can also rejoice. Go back to the word celebrate in mm-hmm. the fact that communication is possible. Mm-hmm. Our forefathers, when their kids would go away, had to wait for a letter to come. Yes, in fact, it's hard to imagine that in generations gone by. So now the kids would go overseas and you had no idea. Right. We cannot even wrap our mind around that. Oh, because no. if our kids go to Walmart, you know, just across town, we can talk to them in real time. Oh, and most parents have that. What is that on their phone where they can track everywhere yeah, their children they, go? They know exactly where the car is. <laughs> yes. So the point being, just very simply, that communication is an essential part of navigating the empty nest. Yes. And, and you that are married, uh, talk to each other, pray together, you know, talk mm-hmm. with God. Right. And, and of course, one of the things you do in the empty nest is you pray up a storm for your children. Absolutely. What a, what a challenging time if your kid just left to go to the military or to go to college or mm-hmm. is, you know, getting a job in a new town. Right. What a time for you to pray it was, um, you know, we, I think it was Vody Bacham who, I think I said his name right, who taught years ago, we, as we were young parents, he taught the idea that 
the, the stages of parenting is give me your attention. That's when you're training obedience. Mm -hmm. And then give me your heart yes. where you're training truth. And then mm -hmm. give me your, your hand where you're mm -hmm. discipling your teenager and everything from finances uh, to relationships, to work, to preparation for being on their own. Right. And then it was our friend Harold Vaughn who added to that. The next step he said is give me your friendship. Mm -hmm. And this is a time for you to, to be friends with your adult children. Yes. And, you know, you're not parenting anymore. You're not, mm -hmm. you know, you're not necessarily governing every area of their life. You've prepa uh, prepared them, Lord willing, to be on their own. Right. But let this become a friendship time and yeah. revel in that. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a ton of friends that I only see maybe three times a year mm -hmm. and or text and call, but we're really good friends. Right. And, and so this is not a bad thing. No. Communication will get you through the empty nest. Any, right. Any other idea on that? So the communication goes between the people who are still in the home. If you're married yes. and the communication goes with the people who have left the home, absolutely, the children who have flown the nest. And also, I would just say to you, if you are a single mom or a single parent and you are experiencing empty nest, you need communication. You yes, need you to get with those Titus two ladies in your church, or maybe you need to become the Titus two lady in your church and invest in those um, young ladies, young mamas in your church. Um, just take the time to maybe maybe start a new ministry, maybe start a ladies Bible study. There, there needs to be a place where you can communicate with other people other than your children. Don't just sit at home alone and think, okay, I'm all by myself. <laughs> yeah, and we, you know, Bethany mentioned ladies there, but you men, if you're a, you know, a single dad mm -hmm. and this is an empty nest time, then, you know, or, or even, you know, your, maybe your wife has passed away. This is an important time for you to learn to communicate. You need to be strong in your church yes, and uh, develop friendships there. If there's a men's group or a men's class, join it yes. and start developing friendships. Uh, maybe pick up a new hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, it's time to, to find a friend to work out with at the gym right? or to, you know, start running training for a marathon with somebody mm -hmm. or, or even, you know, taking up some other hobby. You know, there's, there's a ton you can do as a single dad to where you are connected to other men and, and, you know, who will, sh iron will sharpen iron. Right. All that's about communication and time with each other and investment. Mm -hmm. And so these are, these are your steps. If you're going to successfully navigate this empty nest, there must be preparation. Right. And there must be celebration. There must be communication. Yes. And then here's the last one. There has to be innovation. Mm, creativity. Creativity. <laughs> and, and my goodness, think about all the, the things there. You know, you, you, uh, like our, our son is in college. And one of the things I did last week is I sat down and Found out from his mom what what's his favorites, you know, what's mm -hmm. favorite snacks. Right. And Amazon is beautiful. I ordered it <laughs> and Amazon delivered it. Yes. And uh, there's there's just, you know, that's just a way of my heart being happy because I'm still ministering to a need in his life. Right. And, and but it, it goes in all, all kinds of ways. Uh, innovation is, you know, right now for you that this is all new to it, mm -hmm. it's time to get innovative. Right. It's time to start, you know, maybe it's time for you and your wife to start playing pickleball. Mm. Everybody else is, seems right? like. I know. And it's like seems, the thing to do. Seems to be the thing to do. The so youngs need to pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> and uh, we're not empty nesters yet, but. That's that's true. Uh, that That's coming, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and think about you that, you know, your kids are out there and they're grown already, you know, maybe you're down a, this road a couple of years. Innovation just can be all kinds of things. You you can enjoy being by yourselves. Maybe that's that's a good way you to can. say it. You can. This is a time for you to be like, hey, we can just pick up and go to dinner. Or we can meet at a coffee shop in the middle of the day. Or we could go to bed early. Or we could stay up late. We can watch whatever movie we want to. It doesn't I think what have you to mean be by that is that a kid we, movie. We will go to bed early. I think, <laughs> I think that's what you mean by that. <laughs> yes. Stay up late. Are you kidding? <laughs> Yeah, we're not at that age anymore, but we could if we wanted to. Yes. And, you know, sometimes families, uh, some, some, sometimes people, you know, they find themselves alone now. And, and we've noticed that there's this tendency to be, you know, almost um, a curmudgeon about it. Like, well, you know, mm -hmm. we don't decorate anymore. We're not putting up a Christmas tree this year. There's nobody home. Yeah, nobody's coming for you Christmas. Know, we're not Why decorating would I do the that? house. Yeah. We're not making <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner. Well, wait a minute. Uh, innovation says, you know what? It's just us now. So what are we going to do for Thanksgiving dinner mm -hmm. and celebrate it? Cook it together. You could clean it mm -hmm. up together. Yes. Uh, dress up if you want to, mm -hmm. um, you know, make a special meal that you're going to go out to eat or get together with somebody. Right. Invite and, uh, other people over. Yeah, there are so many ways that you can be innovative and make this empty nest phenomenal. Yes. And as your children, you know, begin to grow up and they get married and they have kids of their own and start developing their own traditions, 
uh, go ahead. Still, it's Christmas time. Decorate the house even if the kids aren't coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, do it. Do it for yourself. Do it for the neighborhood. Do it because Christmas is worth celebrating. Absolutely. Uh, Buy gifts for the children. Mm-hmm. Uh, still, you know, say, well, they're not coming, you know, and maybe our tendency in our culture is to throw money. Well, we're going to send you money mm-hmm. or we're going to send you a gift card. But the truth of the matter is we're living in a culture where there's th- those things don't seem to make a much of a difference. Mm-hmm. It's just a token, you know, well, here, you know, here's your 50 bucks or a hundred bucks or, you know, mm-hmm. however much you send, here's your money for Christmas. And, and I understand there's something easy about that. Right. But, but look, be innovative. If you've got grandchildren and you're feeling this, you know, oh, we're empty and we feel lonely. Well, we'll find out from their parents what size shoe they wear and save up and buy them the coolest Nikes you can afford. <laughs> Every kid in the world will be impressed or order them a special ordered Nike. You can go mm. on Nike and you can choose the shoelaces, and the colors. Create your own. Create your kids their own Nike shoe from mm-hmm. grandpa, grandma. <laughs> uh, Ooh, or do you it will for, be the cool grandparents. <laughs> or do it for your adult children. Right. You know, mm-hmm. find out, you know, what does he do? You know, th- th- does your son have to wear suits? Well, you know, buy him a handmade suit. I mm. mean, there's all kinds of ways you can you be You know, innovative. our adult children sometimes listen to this, so they're well, going to be I don't expecting a little above and beyond. I, I don't mean <laughs> us. <laughs> Mom and dad are going to create <laughs> Nikes for all of us and order handmade suits for maybe, the men. <laughs> maybe this will tell us whether or not our kids are listening to our podcast <laughs> based on how they respond to this. Yeah. But to enjoy being by yourself mm-hmm. and uh, you can even, you know, celebrate your older children, you know, you can, uh, you can buy them pajamas, you could buy them dress clothes, you could even buy them an experience, right? Mm-hmm. you know, a Six Flags tickets or, mm-hmm. or, you know, Disneyland, you know, tickets. There, there's a, there's just a ton of way you can take advantage of this time as well. This is innovation. Mm-hmm. You can take advantage of this time to serve in ways you have been too busy to serve the Lord. Right. If your family's not home for Christmas or a holiday, think of a way that you could reach out and serve someone else. Maybe just to ask your pastor and wife, say, hey, we don't have family coming in this year. What can we do? And they will probably get you plugged in somewhere. Or maybe they would say, hey, we really need help with a Christmas program this year. And maybe it's something you've never been able to do because your family's all been in. Yeah, so, if you're a blessing to someone, that will right. encourage you during this this time of the empty nest yes and, and and if you serve in your church you can encourage your church in some special way so here here's our four words prepare the mm-hmm. empty nest requires preparation so prepare for it and if you are finding yourself in the middle of it we'll start making preparations how are we going to successfully navigate this right and remember to celebrate mm-hmm. that was our second word just just get happy about this <laughs> <laughs> celebrate these. This is a new chapter or maybe a new book in the series. Mm-hmm. Just celebrate, 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 and then communicate. Talk up the storm to each other, to God. Re- reach out. You single parents especially, uh, f- don't forget to communicate. Right. You've got to get in church. You've got to get in Sunday school, Bible mm-hmm. studies, connection classes. Yes. And uh, there's a ton of ways you can connect to people. Mm-hmm. And and do so. Don't don't get in the habit of just relying on Instagram and Messenger. Right. And and I'll, no, I'm talking real life, people to people, person to person, eye to eye. Right. So mm-hmm. have conversations. Invite folks over. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't let your home be lonely. There's people who would come eat with you in a heartbeat. Right. And and all. And so then communication. And last of all, innovation. And, and we're about out of time, but what, what final thoughts would you have for how do you successfully navigate the empty nest? Any final thoughts? Well, I would say look at it as a, an enjoyable season of life that is normal and it is ordained by God. Even the Bible says that Jesus... He grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. And and that was him becoming a young man. And then he was on his own. He did leave, leave his home. So this is normal. This is normal life for your kids. So don't look at it and, and wring your hands. I have seen mamas of kindergartners leaving their children at kindergarten and saying, it just made me think of when they're going to leave the house and I just can't even handle it. Well, you've got several years to prepare for that. So look at it as a good thing. We are preparing servants of the Lord to go out and do what God has called them to do. And we are going to continue to do what God has called us to do after they leave the home. And that's it for the day. We're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us here, Keeping It Young. Remember to reach out if we can help you, serve you. Uh, Share it with someone if you think it'll be a blessing and encouragement to them, and we'd be grateful for that. Have a great week ahead. And in the meantime, serve the Lord with gladness.
The Keeping It Young podcast is a Bax 5 Media production.